considerably cheaper form of transport at Parkstetten in Bavaria. The sport, naturally, water ski, but with a difference. It's the world's first water ski lift, a sort of continuous belt round an oval-shaped water track. The skier hangs onto a tow rope and whips off at around 40 miles an hour. Water sporters at one time can be accommodated on the lift, and there are always plenty of customers. Mind you, not everyone gets their money worth. Spectators are always plentiful when there's something worthwhile watching. Spills or no spills, those tow ropes are kept busy by keen clients eager to get waterborne without having to wait for a towboat. Not everybody, however, cottons on to the mechanical age of sport afloat. For those who prefer the sea breezes, at Ocho Rios on the north coast, one of the activities is underwater exploration, and if you're feeling energetic enough, underwater fishing. Here, more often than not, the bottom of the boat is made of glass, opening up a whole new world of wonder to those looking through. In activities like these, Jamaicans are so much at home that even the fish seem to know them. Although, quite frankly, there's no trick to this. Just offer them a tasty dish of a sea egg and they come running. Or rather, swimming. Even the underwater plants look exotic, yet this, for example, is merely sea fern daintily decorated by coral. A hundred of Australia's best surf riders compete in the national championship at South Bondi. The winner will qualify for the world title competition in a few weeks' time. But there's a lot of tough surf to negotiate first. The present title holder is one of the judges. Set now for international honours, Nat Young. The latest thrill producers in American water sports are aquacarts. They're so light and buoyant, they can speed along in as little as 18 inches of water. Many have a pretty powerful motor, so owners look on 40 miles an hour as hardly more than idly. The little craft have caught on in a big way. It's reckoned that at least 5,000 of them are skimming about along the Californian coast. With less and less room on the roads, more and more people are turning to the water, where at any rate up to now, there's still room to turn round. There's no sound sweeter than the creak of a rope and the wind singing in a sail. That's what they tell you right around the coast of Britain, from Thurso to Tor Bay, here where top yachtsmen from 20 countries compete for the Finn Gold Cup. These Finns are the unirigged, single-handed Olympic racing dinghies that have become internationally popular as more and more people everywhere are suddenly bent on mucking about in boats, in spite of the fact that they cost more than a small motor car. And the big race is underway. In a headwind, these craft take a bit of balancing. They call it sitting out the boat, but that's putting it mildly. Some of them seem to be lying down on the job in this round-the-year sport that's never out of season and always fun. On the Pacific coast off Los Angeles, they're trying out the new paddle polo. The referee throws in the ball and two teams compete for the championship of the West. The great idea is to stay on the paddle and not land in the drink. The goalie's a very busy gent. He saved that one, but he's up against some really tough water babies. 
Get a load of this. And that's a go. Crafty, rafty work in the final chucker. The game's a good one, even if it is all wet. Inviting, isn't it, this 400-pound ski craft, which brings a touch of Mediterranean excitement to the waters of a Hertfordshire country club. And don't despair if you haven't got the expert touch of pretty Pam Horton. It's almost as easy as riding a scooter. German brands have developed this little water terrier and already it has sparked off a wave of ski craft clubs throughout the world. Indeed, this little invention is so compact that you don't need a trailer. Just strap it on the roof of the car and off you go to the nearest stretch of water. underestimate this water wizard which looks like something out of science fiction. Just a quick flick on the throttle and in no time at all you're traveling at 28 miles an hour. Twenty-eight miles an hour and it feels and looks like 50. doesn't it? But if you spend as many practice hours as Tony Reader, then it really is child's play. And with just one gallon of fuel, you can keep this up for an hour. Anyone tempted? Julius Caesar could never have imagined this version of chariot racing back in Roman times. But who can deny it's just as exciting? And taking a ducking is a safer way up. And here's one last thought. How long will it be before businessmen start commuting up the river on one of these? 